Hi, this is James Tobin, clarinetist here in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I'm going to discuss the District 13 Senior Division Prepared Etude for the Lower Winds, especially the bass clarinet. And if you haven't had a chance to look at this yet, get started. Uh, this is very similar difficulty to an all-state prepared etude, and you kind of need to take the same course with it. At the outset, you need to work on this at a tempo that you can succeed with, um, something that's definitely much less than the required 110 beats per minute. And um, in the first week, just lay down repetitions of what's right, you know, with the right articulations, the right notes, the right rhythms, choose your fingerings, get an idea of how you want to play things, and concentrate on it being correct and relaxing and letting it be easy. So at the outset here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to work on it at the eighth note pulse, 120 beats a minute, so about 55% of the final tempo. Um, and we're just going to go measure by measure talking about what's important. In the first measure, it's the accent. And that accent needs to be the feature of the measure. You need to make sure you don't start too loud. If you start too loud, the accented note won't seem accented. Um, additionally, for bass player players, you got to really make sure that you have a, a smooth and seamless cross into the register, across the register, and back down again. In the second measure, it's really about the crescendo and that crescendo of measure two taking us all the way to measure three. In measure three, we have two different elements. Um, one is one is this accent that's in beat two in the syncopated rhythm, and then the other is, is staccato. And if we overuse staccato earlier in the measures, in the, in the earlier measures and afterwards, then, then this won't be noticeable. So it's important to play a lot of the rest of the piece more on the legato side, so the staccato sounds different than the legato. In measure four, we have a contrast, and again, a crescendo from piano, uh, which is so far the softest dynamic in the piece, to fortissimo in measure five, which is going to be the loudest dynamic you can deliver, right? And, you know, this is a good opportunity to wail. Uh, in measure five, the rhythm here looks really difficult, and if you're trying to perceive it on the regular quarter note pulse, it's tricky, um, but when we have the eighth note pulse here, it's just a series of upbeats. One, e, a, e, a, e, a four, right? And you've played this a lot in life. In measure six, I think the, the trickiest thing here is, is the diminuendo in, in beat two, and, and then that octave leap, especially in the bass clarinets in beat three and making sure that at the beginning of measure six you're still fortissimo. The rhythm in the second half of measure six on beats three and four is the same syncopated rhythm that we have in measure five. It's exactly the same. The difference is that it, the notes are sustained. It's legato, not staccato, and that's the only difference. It looks hugely different, but it isn't played hugely different. Same thing. Measure seven, yay, something easy. Uh, in measure eight, there's a couple different ways to work on this. Uh, the very first thing I'd recommend doing is playing them by beat chunks. So, all of beat one, including the first note of beat two. Then all of beat two, including the first note of beat three. Then all of beat three, including the first note of beat four, like this. And doing as many repetitions of each one as you need. After having worked on it by the beat, I think the really advantageous thing to do is to work on it by the accent, going from accent to accent, accent to accent. Two ways together should provide you with a really 
um, a great deal of flexibility and ability to play correctly under pressure, right? <laughs> In measure nine, again, we have one of the easy measures here. Everything in one register, rhythms that we've seen before. Um, you should work to try to find some way to play this other than just mezzo forte from beginning to end. Or maybe. Just something, give it some shape. Uh, measure 10, again, a mostly easy measure, and really the leap into beat three is the only thing to concern yourself with, and then making sure you accent at the end. Um, and then it's kind of easy street, and the last line, right? A chromatic scale. In measure 11, the notes are in sets of three, but they're just regular 16th notes, um, and it's just a ascending chromatic scale. And then we're in the last two measures of the piece where things are largely at their easiest. Uh, when I play this in a moment in real time, I'll reach Arbando like I intend to. Um, one little detail about the triplet eighth notes is to not let them fall behind. A lot of times we'll hear things like this. And, I, and I'm sorry, the triplet eighth notes in measure 12 on beat three. When you hear that, you, I hope you realize the first two notes are too long and the third is too short. Ba, 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 ba. Which is not a triplet. Three notes that are equal in value. Okay. Um, and so therefore, that's pretty much <clears throat> blow by blow, measure by measure, what it is you're looking to do. Um, I'm going to play it here at the final tempo. And a word about that, uh, right at the beginning, this is, this is 110 beats a minute is really, really, really fast. And if you're not comfortable with 110 beats a minute, don't play it that fast. Um, you should always, in every audition, play in a way that makes you look good and make you sound good. And if 100 beats a minute is going to sound great for you, that's fantastic. If 90 beats a minute is going to sound great for you, that's fantastic. If it's 85 or 80 beats a minute, that's fantastic. Play it in a way that makes you look good and the judges will figure out how to score it, okay? What will almost certainly, rarely, never sounds good is when you go much faster than you're capable of, hoping that it will just go right. It's a recipe for disaster. It just is. Just stay within yourself and play at the tempo that you prepare to play. And the more you work for the next seven days, 14 days, like we just talked about, the more likely you are to get to a, a very quick final tempo that will get you a good score. So what does 110 sound like? Ba -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Let's see how my practicing paid off. Keeping score at home will notice in measure three it wasn't quite exactly like it's printed. Uh, but uh, I didn't freak out about the mistake because my rhythm was a little bit funky. Uh, I just kept right on going, concentrating on the next measure. And uh, in the grand scheme of things, you know, I'd be pleased with that score. If you have questions, please email me and thank you for listening.